My name is Runo, and this is Three Scary Stories. I'm Levi, and I guide ATV tours in the mountains of West Virginia. The property we ride on covers hundreds of acres next to the local national park. The trails that we frequent are basically old coal mining and logging roads that we made well over 100 years ago when the local coal boom was in its prime. My job consists of leading groups of customers on ATVs through the forest along the trails, keeping them safe and in one piece. Some guests are great and the trips are a lot of fun, others not so much. I'm a huge fan of work in the morning trips because I get to have the rest of the day to do whatever I please afterwards. Also, the evening trips have become kind of weird as of late. I've been steadily scheduled to work the late trips over the past couple of months and I've started to notice something strange. In certain parts of the trail system, I began to notice this very odd smell that honestly makes me want to gag. It's sometimes like roadkill that has been baking in the sun for days. The smell is so strong that it lingers in your throat in the worst way. It never lasts long because we move through the areas pretty quickly. However, the guests will always ask, what was that awful smell a few miles back? I would always shrug and tell them it was probably a small animal that had become lunch for something else. Or maybe a hunter had skinned a deer nearby or something. I always felt like I was trying to convince myself as much as I was trying to convince them. But the events that occurred in the past week, I can't say it's something far worse. Last Tuesday I came in for my routine evening run with two guests that said that they had some experience riding. I was pumped because this meant that I could do some actual riding in the evening instead of just piddling along the trails. We took off around 6pm and went absolutely tearing through the trails. These guests were some of the best that I had on the trip yet. We were covering miles of pretty extensive terrain and having a blast doing so. Then, there it was. That awful smell. I rolled my eyes and went to the throttle down as I get past it, but then I noticed that something felt different. I could feel the hair standing on the back of my neck. For the first time, it felt like something was watching me. In my distraction, I had let off the throttle and began to scan the trees on either side of me. I never noticed how dark the forest around us seemed to be during that time of day. I continued the scan, but could not see anything out of the ordinary. The sound of sliding tires and squeaking brakes brought me back to my senses. And I was almost at a dead stop. The first guest behind me, Ryan, asked if I was okay and why we were stopping. I responded that I thought that I saw a deer about to cross the path. We resumed our trip and continued toward the destination that was an overlook into the national park. If I felt a knot forming in my stomach and a sense of uneasiness taking over me. We made it to our overlook just a few minutes later. The overlook is a great place to stop for a break and just let the guests take some selfies. The view consists of mountains with a beautiful river nestled down the gorge hundreds of feet below. The view of the sunset from this spot is absolutely breathtaking. I took some pictures of the guys and then sat down to have some water while they continued to be awestruck. I keep looking back in the tree line as if expecting to see something. I guess the truth is, I don't know what I was expecting to see. I just felt like there was something out there. It had been stalking us. If it had something to do with the smell, then maybe it had been stalking me for quite some time now. All I knew is that I wanted to head back to the base and tell my boss that I didn't want to work any more evening trips. I would make up some health condition or say my eyesight is bad or something. After the guests were finished taking pictures, we mounted up and headed back towards the base. Along the way back, the smell came back again. Not once, but twice. Both times I remembered to keep my hand on the throttle, but I still couldn't help but glance around in the trees frantically. The last time I smelled that, I could have sworn I saw something darting through the trees on my left. Didn't see it long enough to tell what it was, other than I could tell it was black and large. I hammered the throttle and ran the machine harder and faster than I had ever dared take it before. I kept glancing back at my guests to make sure that they were keeping up. No time at all, we all made it back to the base. I breathed a sigh of relief, but it was short-lived. I started to give my goodbyes to the guests. Ryan explains, shit, my phone. I asked him what was wrong about his phone. My stomach dropped when he replied that he left it sitting on a rock at the overlook. Man, I must have just forgot when we were out there taking it all in, you know? Trying to avoid the obvious question that I knew was coming, I told Ryan that it should be fine there until the morning and we could go grab it then. Are you serious, man? What if somebody steals it? What about the dew? It could ruin it. I was starting to get upset because I knew Ryan made valid points and that somebody would have to go to retrieve the phone. Also, if my boss found out that I let guests leave without his phone, it would probably not look good on my part. Where exactly did you leave your phone on the rock, I say? I left it on the rock behind the bonsai looking tree. Ryan replies, I knew the tree he was talking about, but my cowardice stepped in for one last shot to avoid making a trip back out there. I don't man, that's not something we normally do going out after dark and all. Rhino was almost begging at this point, and then offered me a hundred bucks if I went to get it. I thought to myself that I was just being irrational and that there were a million things in the forest that could be smelling awful. I probably thought I saw something because I had myself all psyched out. Just know that I could get in trouble for taking the machines out after dark. I wouldn't have gotten into trouble, I wanted them to know how out of the ordinary it was. I filled up my quad, told him I would be right back, and started for the trailhead. It was now dark out, and the only light to be seen was from the rising moon and my lonely headlight. I was whipping through the trails just at lightning speed, dodging mud holes and sliding around sharp turns. I knew the path like the back of my hand and knew how fast I could push it. There, the smell again. 
No, I wouldn't let myself slip into paranoia that had been gripping me before. I pushed it out of my mind and powered through. But wait, it's not going away. Why isn't the smell going away? I sped up and within 100 meters of where I first caught wind of the smell, I had to reach the overlook. We do not normally drive machines out onto the rock. There was no chance that I was leaving my quad to walk out. I drove up onto the rock and quickly spotted the tree and then Ryan's phone on the rock right behind it. Without stopping, I looped the tree, leaned over to snatch the phone and continued back towards the trail. I felt a slight tingle of relief as I now had at least had the phone. The relief disappeared when I realized the smell still hadn't gone away, it gotten stronger. I couldn't help it now, my mind was racing and panic had gripped me so tightly that it was hard to breathe. I was coming off onto the rock and then I felt the air on the back of my neck stand up on end. I began to scan the trees frantically, but all I could see was darkness in every direction except in front of me. Throttled down, accelerating to now unsafe speeds, I was determined to get the hell out of the forest. Something new. A crashing sound on the right side of the trail just a few yards behind me. The sound of brush shaking and branches snapping. The most fucked up part. The sound was keeping speed with me. Whatever was thundering through the brush behind me was going just as fast as I was. Now that I had a direction to look at, I glanced over my right shoulder, and that's when I saw it. A pair of glowing yellow eyes popping vigorously up and down at whatever beast they belonged to, was doing his best to run me down. Oh fuck, I shouted as I opened the throttle full bore. I was now traveling so fast that the tree limbs were becoming a blur in my headlights. The sound was still there right behind me. It was slowing down. All of a sudden, the crashing moved up to my right. It was gaining around ahead of me. I started to see the trees ahead of me on the right side of the path shaking violently. Please, no. I yelled as I tried to go faster. Light. I could see the light from the base up ahead. It seemed like a hundred miles that I had left to go, and my quad sounded like it was going to explode. The beast continued far ahead of me, seemingly shaking the entire forest in its wake. It was cutting me off. Up ahead about 50 meters, the creature emerged from the tree line onto the path, blocking my way to safety. I slammed on my brakes so hard that it nearly threw me over the handlebars. What I saw before me is still hard for me to process. Standing in my path was a beast that resembled an elk, if elk were 15 feet tall. It had black fur that only seemed to cover patches of its enormous body. The rest was covered in a foul-looking collage of exposed flesh, bone, and infection. Its lower jaw hung loose, leaving its mouth agape in an impossible, unnatural way. Its tongue was bright red and writhed around like some sort of serpent. I looked up to the antlers and was horrified. Broken and contorted, pointing in a manner of directions. Vertebrae protruded along its spine, and its hooves were as big around as the wheels on my machine. Its eyes burned the most horrifically beautiful color yellow, and I felt as if it was looking straight into my thoughts. The beast heaved as clouds of steam came from its nostrils, and then it began to walk towards me. I wanted to try to escape, but I was frozen. No matter how much my mind screamed at my body to do something, I could not move. The beast was now standing right in front of the machine, looking down at me. It cranes its head down until it was eye level with me. The smell, God, the smell. Without warning, the creature raised its snake-like tongue up my chin across my face, as if it was licking the fear right off of it. I heard a low grumble rise up in the creature's chest. It sounded like someone had stuck bricks into a washing machine. To my horror, the creature spoke to me. I don't like your smell. It said as words fell out of its gaping mouth like boulders falling from a cliff. What? I weepishly managed to say. Your smell. It's ruining my home. I looked down at my bike that was still running the exhaust. The creature was talking about the exhaust from my quad. I slowly reached down to the key and shut off the machine. The yellow eyes of the beast, now the only thing I could see, it stood still, holding its gaze onto mine. Then it let out a shrieking bellow that still eats away at the corner of my mind. And then, the eyes disappeared into the forest as I listened to the creature crash away into the night. I instantly burst into tears, left to my machine and ran for the base as hard as my now quivering legs could carry me. Ryan and his friend stood horrified at the sight of me and asked what happened. I tried to tell them everything that had transpired over the past 20 minutes, but it didn't work quite like I thought it would. The cops were called, my boss was called, and that was the last trip that I guided for the company. I'm trying to move on with my life now, but I wake up some nights feeling I can still smell a tinge of the awful, familiar smell. And some nights I feel I can see those haunting yellow eyes burning outside my window. I'm not sure what the creature was or where it came from, but I don't think I ever want to. The one thing that I know is I will never step foot into those woods again for as long as I live. Friday morning, 5.30 a.m., I lay in my bed as my dad comes in to wake me. Get up, we're getting an early start. Mom's downstairs making eggs and bacon. I groan and shoot back with a, I'm up. Regretting not setting an alarm for earlier in the morning to give myself a chance to catch my bearings, I snap out of a tired daze and sit on the edge of my bed. Run on a flannel, pull up my car hearts and lace my danners before heading downstairs to meet my family for breakfast. 
seems like a tradition now to come downstairs and sigh at the fact that I'm only a child as of two years ago. Today is the anniversary of my older brother's death due to a tragic car accident with a drunk driver. I say hello to my mother and give her a hug as we both know what dread we feel on this day. Dad quickly intervenes. Hey champ, you all packed up? Remember, it's quite the drive we've got ahead of us. Yeah, Dad, I'm all ready. What time are we getting out of here? I replied. I'm ready when you are. I give my mom one last hug for the weekend before we leave. Dad and I throw our bags in the back of the Dodge and hit the road. You ready for this? He asks. Ready as I'll ever be, I replied. Two hours in the trip, we stop at the rest stop to use the bathroom. An old man in tattered clothing smirks at me. Headed up the mountain, are you? He asks. Yeah, just me and my dad this weekend, I shortly replied. Be careful up there. There's evil in these woods, boy. He said before bellowing out a snickering chuckle. I hurry up to wash up and get out of the bathroom, being unsettled now. I figured he was just a crazy old man. I've never been so wrong in my life. I meet dad in the truck and he can immediately tell I was thrown off. Got something on your mind, bud? I told him it was nothing and tried to brush off my previous interaction with the old man. A few more hours go by and my dad takes a right turn and parks the truck. We made it, buddy, he exclaimed. What a beautiful drive, I replied. Well, we should really start getting set up. It's going to be dark here soon, he says. We set up the tent and stove before setting the fire. As we sit around the fire, Dad hands me a beer. You're 16 now. I know what you kids get into, especially these days, so all I ask is when you drink, it's with me, he says. Our conversation ends abruptly as we both see something in the corner of our eyes, but as soon as it was there, it was gone. We brush it off and finish up for the night and put out fire before hitting the sack. Saturday, 6 o'clock a.m., we both wake up to the sound of sticks breaking around the tent. Started, we both grab our handguns in case of a cougar. But again, as soon as we heard it, it was over. Both on the edge, we climb out of the tent to start a fire and brew some morning coffee. We both have a warm cup before strapping up for a hike. We set off for an unmarked trail. Our first mistake, if you don't count leaving after both unsettling events prior. We mark trees along the way so we don't get lost. All of a sudden, we hear a faint screaming sound northeast of where we were headed on the trail. Both of us a little frightened, we unholster our handguns and move towards the screams. We stumbled upon a shack in a small clearing. As soon as we saw a glimpse of it, it screamed stopped on a dime. Both not realizing it, we rushed towards the shack and busted in. Immediately, after the door flew open, we both couldn't hold our stomachs from the smell. We both threw up our coffee in the trail mix from this morning. We both looked at each other with disturbed looks on our faces and we progressed deeper into the shack. Inside the shack is an all too familiar face. Staring back at me with an unnatural wide grin is the old man this time with deep dark pits for eyes and a set of long sharp and bloody teeth. He repeated his previous statement, there's evils in these woods. The smell was immediately identifiable as he was standing next to a pile of rotting corpses. I hear a quick run from my dad as he turns around and bolts for the door. As we run we realize we lost our trail markers. Dad tells me he knows which direction leads to the truck. As we sprint through the woods in desperate hopes to find camp, there are unnatural tall slender creatures staring from the trees. They're jet black and almost like shadows. They have no expression, no features, but we can feel their gaze pierce on us as we dash through the woods. We can hear the old man's voice taunting us as we run, getting closer and closer. The woods more gravely and sounds almost as if there's hundreds of the same voice talking at the same time. As we move further towards the truck, Dad falls over. He reaches for his lungs as if they were collapsing. He hands me his keys and tells me to keep going. As soon as this happened, the creature searches for my dad and rips his foot clean off. As the thing does so to my dad, immediately draws his gun and desperately empties his entire magazine on the creature. Yelling at me to run, I finally give in and book in to the direction he was taking us. Not too long after I see the smoke from the embers of the fire we started this morning. With a silent yell of relief, I book it towards the truck. What I see at camp will stick with me forever. And the fire was my dad's mingled corpse. Absolutely mortified, I start bawling, but quickly snapped out of my state when the creature's voice erupted from the trees. I fumbled with my keys before jumping into the truck and pulling out. Cruising down the mountain faster than I've ever driven before, I can still see the shadow figures in the trees. After a long and fast-paced drive home, I feel like I've made it in record time. I hurry and get my mom out of the house and fill her in. Can't stop crying about dad. I don't know what to do, but for now, my mom was taking us towards California and far, far away from whatever that thing was. I can still hear him yelling from the distance. I'm scared. As of now, the thing out there. Hunting. If you find a cabin in the woods in northwest Oregon, don't listen to the screams. This is a true story that happened to me years ago. I'm from Germany and worked at an old person's home in a little German town at the time. Faculty was in a rural area outside the skirts of the town. One night I had night shift with a new co-worker I'd never worked with before. He was in his mid-fifties wearing little round glasses and for some reason seemed a little strange to me on first sight. There are always only two workers alone in the facility at night and our job is to watch over a hundred rooms on three floors and make control rounds through the whole facility. We weren't allowed to use the elevators for security reasons at night and had to use the stairway instead. 
I remember the strange weather that night. It was stormy and wild outside. When my shift started about 10 p.m., at this time most of the personnel were gone. Only one older nurse was in the station room on the second floor, where we had our headquarters at night. She wasn't used to the newer PC programs and took her longer to finish her writings. Me and my coworker started our first round through the house, using the stairways which had heavy doors but had to close slowly and carefully every time to avoid noise. Everything was quiet. Most old people were already sleeping and after checking all the rooms, we sat in the second floor station room and finished some paperwork. The old nurse was gone and all doors to the outside were shut and the house was completely quiet when we were sitting at the table. After 15 minutes sitting in the quiet, suddenly a heavy door in the stairways was smashed hard. We looked at each other without saying anything and immediately run to the stairway. I run up three floors and my workmate sprinted down on the ground floor. We saw nothing and nobody. We even checked the stairway's windows. All were closed. Someone must have been in the stairway, we concluded. As we found nothing, we continued on tour, starting from the third floor down to the ground floor. From there on, I could not stop thinking about what the hell would sneak around the floors at the middle of the night. It was 2 a.m. and we had to change the double sheets from an old invalid man who pissed in his bed, stood in the corner of his room beside the bed, backed up against a wall. A co-worker was on the other side of the bed. I remember watching the door, waiting for someone to peer into the room. While I was concentrating on the door and lost in my thoughts, suddenly my co-worker freaked out, screaming at the old man out of nowhere, ripping around the sheets and tossing around the old man. His face got an angry creep look and I was totally shocked as not able to say or do anything. I just watched this creepy guy in front of me with the totally black windows behind him and the door leading to the dark floors, where some freak sneaked around unseen. I stood there pressed on the wall in the corner of the room and felt totally lost, surrounded by psychopaths. We finally reached the ground floor and everything was quiet, only the wind blowing around the house. Suddenly we heard a dropping sound, like someone dropped a knife or something metallic. The sound came from the kitchen area. We run to the closed glass door where the sound came from. It was a long dark hallway with a back door leading to the trash cans and parking lot. At the end we opened the door and searched every single room. We felt extremely uncomfortable and expected an attack at any moment. Again we found nothing. Some hours later we started our last tour for this night. We split it up this time and I checked the rooms like usual. When I looked in one room and an old lady was awake and sat up on her bed. She asked me if I was in her room five minutes ago. I said no, and we just started our tour. She told me that five minutes ago she clearly heard someone enter the room. She asked who was there, but didn't get an answer back. Then the door closed again. Got a creepy feeling while listening to this old lady. I told her to push the alarm button next time something like this happens again. I think it's unnecessary to say how I felt for the next few hours of the night every time I entered a room or walked around a corner. I expected some stranger standing there all the time. I was more than glad when this damn shift was over. Some days later, I met the old nurse who left the facility late that night and told her the story. She told me that the back door to the kitchen area was wide open when she went to her car that night. She left us. She reached the open dark back door from the parking lot and called if somebody is there. Suddenly, she got a very bad feeling, turned around, ran to her car, and drove off fast. She was totally scared and tried to reach and warn us, but didn't find the number. I told her the back door was definitely closed when we checked the area. We never found out what creepy freaks sneaked around in the night, and many of the night shift co-workers reported similar experiences the following month. The co-worker I had to work with that night was fired after more and more complaints about this person emerged over time. Anyway, I'm glad I don't have to work there anymore, and I will never work night shift again.